you want to get into PC gaming, then chances are you have one big question. Should you build or should you buy your gaming PC? Of course, both methods will get you the same thing. A kick-ass gaming rig that's perfect for playing games in the best, most luxurious way possible, but each comes with its own pros and cons. And contrary to popular belief, it's not just a case of time or money, there's a lot more to think about when it comes to getting your own gaming PC, so allow me to help you personally. Forget about what everyone else says, don't be pressured into doing one thing or the other. Let me help you to actually find the method that's right for you, right after a short word from this video's sponsor. Lenovo's Legion range of gaming monitors have arrived and they offer something for everyone. Regardless of whether you're looking on a budget or after high end, Lenovo brings cool and classy design with high end features and performance. This Legion R27Q model packs 1440p QHD resolution, is IPS and even overclocks to a mighty 180Hz, all for a crazily affordable price. Learn more today with the link down below. Let's keep this as simple as possible then. And essentially you have three main options. Either you can build it yourself from scratch with all of the parts, you can get a PC builder to actually do this for you, or you can buy a pre-build system from the likes of Acer, MSI, Alienware, and obviously each do have their pros and cons, but I'm a very big advocate for the first option, which is building it yourself from scratch with all of the parts. And yes, absolutely, building it yourself can be scary. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this, but just like moving on to your first home or getting into a new relationship, it's probably worth the investment. Building it yourself will entail around about a week researching and planning a shopping list of components before grabbing some clear table space and then assembling it all together for that magical first power on experience. There's absolutely no soldering required, nothing close to heavy tools needed, just a little bit of patience around about three hours of time and a handy Phillips crosshead screwdriver or two to make up your rig. I know this because you guys are constantly reminding me on the channel, but you say you get a lot of confidence from watching all of my content because I'm a little bit like heavy handed with everything. I drop things from here and there. And generally speaking, everything still works by the end of it. I think I've only broken one, maybe two components in the whole like 11 years of doing this channel. And bearing in mind, I'm building two PCs a week. And when I did break something that was kind of, I won't say being deliberately careless, but I was absolutely being careless. I think you're gonna be absolutely fine. I have faith in you. But let's take my personal opinions out of this for a second and actually drill down into the pros and cons because it won't be for everyone and there are plenty of reasons to go down a slightly different road. Now, the main advantage of building it yourself is essentially all about cost and flexibility as there's no one to tell you what you can and can't have, no rules beyond basic compatibility. This means that you can choose the components of your dreams and save money on overly expensive CPUs and motherboards that you probably don't need and then put it all together without actually paying someone for the man hours required for assembly. Plus, with such small shipment sizes, most parts usually arrive in a day or two rather than waiting around for someone else to do their job. It is also easily by far the easiest method if you're someone that's going to want to upgrade your PC at a later date, as not only do you know what all of the components mean, so you probably know what your upgrades are going to be, but because you built it yourself, there aren't going to be any surprises when you open it up. You've put everything where it is anyway, so I imagine like swapping out your GPU or putting an extra SSD in isn't going to phase you at all. You also gain the advantage of being in full control of any weak links, so hopefully you won't end up with a dud of a power supply or a motherboard that's worth about 50p. Furthermore, because you are installing Windows yourself, it's about as clean as it possibly could be. No bloatware from backdoor deals between brands and antivirus trials. And I know we're now scooting back into the realm of opinion, but one of the other things that I absolutely love about PC building is that it's fun and you get a brand new hobby out of it. The reason that people are really proud of their PCs and keep upgrading them is because of just that. They are really proud of their gaming PCs and it is an enjoyable experience once you've kind of got over the initial stress of putting it all together. You can customize it exactly how you want. It can be something that expresses who you are as a person. And one of the other things I really love about this is not only that I've got a job and a career out of it, but also seeing you guys putting together your rigs and discussing everything over on Discord. We have a little community over there of PC builders and it's fantastic. And if you do want to join that and talk to everyone else and see what their thoughts are on build versus buy then hit the discord link down below i'm sure you won't regret it but of course whilst there are loads of pros i've got to be honest with you guys there are quite a few downsides as well not anything that i think you guys can't deal with but we have to give you the full reality of the situation so here are all of the cons 
The main one is all about complexity and difficulty, really, as it's all very well that 200 build PC centric says it's really easy. Hurrah! Whereas, obviously, realistically, your first PC build will probably feel quite intense, and this is something that catches you out during the initial build process. And I remember the first guide I ever read about building a gaming PC, they said that, like, two thirds of the way through, they were just like crying out saying that they wish and that they'd just gone and bought a Dell and everything would have gone away. And that kind of sounded a bit like drastic and silly when I was reading that article. But I do remember that during my first PC build, I did get very stressed, which is why I say take like a little bit of time just to go and sit somewhere else because this helped me and I'm sure it will help you too. I should know as well that while it is unlikely, there is also the chance that you can damage something during the build process. And I would say on this one that as long as you're careful, you don't run you take your time, you read the instructions. And if you live in the UK as well, it's not an ad for scan computers, but they do actually offer a special insurance. So if you're worried about this, then you can pay like a small fee. And then if you damage something accidentally whilst you're building it, then that is covered as well. But as I say, around about 200 builds or something on the channel and I've not really had any issues and I've been doing it on camera, being clumsy, like dropping stuff everywhere. So I think you'd be fine. Just read the instructions first. The other main drawback really is that of course you will need to actually learn all about PC components and how to build with them in the first place. I mean, sure, having the freedom of all of the parts and stuff is great, but if you don't know what a B-series motherboard is, what DDR5 means, or whether Nvidia or AMD is better for you, then you could end up running into compatibility issues during the build process. And once everything is set up and running, if you experience any issues, then you've got to diagnose them yourself. No crying to Dell or CyberPower, you're on your own. You see, I told you I'd be honest, PC-centric, the PC building channel, giving you the reality of building your computer. But as I've said many, many times and throughout the years on the channel, honestly, if I can do it, you can do it. And I would also like to say as well, that if you do run into any issues and you do have to diagnose them yourself, then I think the favorite video that I've ever made on the channel and one of the most popular is actually how to diagnose a problem with a computer that won't boot. You can find that video in the top right corner of your screen, either watch that later, maybe save it to a playlist or watch it after this and then you'll know how to deal with those problems if they come up. But anyway, that's building it yourself. Let's move on to option two, which is what we actually have here on the desk, which is getting your system integrator to build it for you. And I've ruined my joke there, I was meant to say an SI, and then I was going to say it sounds a bit like a disease, but it actually stands for system integrator. I've ruined everything, oh. So yes, I'm glad we got that clarified. SI, system integrator, not a disease. And generally speaking, they are actually a really helpful bunch that give you the flexibility of off-the-shelf PC parts without needing to do the heavy lifting, quite literally yourself. The rig that you're seeing right now is actually from Chill Blast right here in the UK, and we're actually giving this PC away. Follow me on Instagram for the upcoming details on that. But anyway, as you can see, this is just like all of the other builds on the channel, with the exception that I didn't have to do any of it myself. It's super neat and tidy, all tested and fully operational, and it even has Windows preloaded with a license key, so it's quite literally just plug and play. And generally speaking, I don't actually have a bad word to say about system integrators, as long as they play fair, because not all of them do, not all rigs are created equally and the theme that you're going to find with not only the system integrator rigs but the ones that we talk about in just a second is that obviously you do have to be very careful about what it is that you're buying it's going to be very easy for like a bit of marketing to say oh this is an awesome gaming pc but if it costs like 400 pounds or something then it's not going to be an awesome gaming pc there's not really like many specific terms that actually can tell you how good a gaming pc is going to be other than looking at like gameplay benchmarks so don't go expecting like a 1500 pound or dollar PC from one place to be the same as one from another because as we know from building PCs ourselves, the price can like quite literally vary so much depending on the other components around it and the core components are always going to be the graphics card and the CPU so if you don't do any research at all please make sure that those two components are as high-end as possible and will match the experience that you actually want to get in game. Now obviously this convenience and this service doesn't come for free but the extra cash that you spend will get you a fully packaged and delivered system with a warranty on the rig as a whole. So if something goes wrong, just give them an email or a call and they'll help you fix it or get it returned and repaired. All right then, Centric, that actually doesn't sound too bad. Sign me up. But just hang on, wait a second. There are some downsides that you do need to be aware of. And obviously the obvious is the extra cost, but there are some other things to note too. Firstly, make sure that you are still brushing up on the components. As we've already stated, you need to make sure you're getting the right system for you and you need to make sure that everything in the PC 
checks out. It's very common to see like a cheap PSU or maybe a cheap motherboard that brings down the cost and looks really enticing, but when you look into it, it's frankly a little bit of a dud. You also don't always get a lot of freedom with some of these sites, as they tend to have backdoor deals. That sounds bad. To be clear, I'm not talking about anyone specific here or any specific rig. This is something I've seen from multiple sites and I'm not like against the business practice. It's just something that you do have to be aware of because if you don't want a particular component or don't want a particular brand, you might find it better to be looking at different websites depending on the deals that they may or may not have. Other things to know, probably not quite as serious, but wait times can be long, especially for custom requests or if there's brand new components that have just come in. And of course, there's also the risk of damage in transit as PCs don't really like being shipped, especially with air coolers, though this should be covered by your warranty. And of course, don't forget that you will still need to install all of the tuning and RGB software and potentially enable BIOS settings yourself. So it's not quite as easy as the third option, but it is pretty darn close. Oh, and because you didn't build it yourself, don't forget that you also won't know how it was built. So you'll probably be a little bit more wary about making any upgrades, but ultimately this does come down to your confidence more than anything else. In the interest of clarity, honestly, I do really like system integrated builds. I mean, the biggest problem for me is that I just think it takes the fun out of it, but everyone has different schedules, people have different like time requirements, and not everyone wants to learn how to build a gaming PC. So they are highly recommended as long as you're buying something that is quality and that you have vetted yourself. So pretty much tick off the two things, which is that you vetted every single component inside it, there aren't any duds in there and you're happy with everything and then secondly make sure that you've like compared the price of all of the components maybe list everything put it in like pc part picker or something see how much it would come out to if you built it yourself and then see what the difference in price is with the one from the system integrator because i would say the target is going to be between like 100 and 200 dollars but obviously it does depend what they've done to it if they're doing like custom cooling or if they're doing maybe a bit of extra overclocking painting it obviously that's going to cost more money but if you don't think they're really doing much and they're trying to charge you like a thousand dollars or something for the privilege then like that's clearly not going to be the best use of your money. But at the end of the day, it's entirely up to you. But I should remind you that there is a third and final option. I mean, there's a fourth option as well, which is stick to a games console. Woo, fanboys, yeah. Or fifth option, don't play any games. That would be sad though, wouldn't it? But anyway then, option number three, the classic pre-built from a well-known brand. They're certainly worth considering, but put simply, they vary a lot in quality. Some are going to be decent, others absolute toilet. Pre-builds are sold from your classic vendors with Acer, Alienware, Dell, Omen and loads loads more offering very unique takes on gaming PCs and they come in various shapes and sizes and there are three things that I really do quite like about them. And again, first is ease of use because very similar to this, you take it out of the box and you plug it in and everything has been done for you. Actually more done for you with one of these pre-builds versus a system integrator because there's usually like all of the software pre-installed that you need so whether that's like GeForce Experience and the drivers and things which is great or if you've got like RGB fans the software and stuff should be on there good to go as we touch on there's potentially a bit more than that installed in your system but I guess you could argue it's the easiest of the lot secondly and then I am gonna be very precise with my words here I'd say that I'm a fan of the uniqueness of the styles that you get because say what you will about them you do have to agree that it is hard to find anything that looks quite quite as quirky as some of these systems, for better or for worse. Then last, but certainly not least, I also love that you can generally find some proper bargains with some of these PCs, especially if there's some newer hardware that has just come out. Stores want to clear the old stock as quickly as possible, and if it has been sitting there a while, you can actually get a brand new PC, sometimes for less than the cost of a DIY, if you're very savvy, of course. But I'm afraid that's where my enthusiasm starts to run out because generally speaking, I'm not a massive fan of them. Now again, and very, very important, I must stress this, I'm not trying to single anything in particular or anyone out, but I always like transparency. And a lot of these rigs will use custom motherboards, graphics cards, coolers, various different bits. And this can actually result in it being very hard to say exactly what you're going to get and how easy it is gonna to be to upgrade. Now actually a really good example of this was the Corsair one that we reviewed a couple of months ago. I say I wasn't going to single anyone out, but the reason for this is because we don't test many pre-builds on the channel because, as I say, I think I have a bias against them. But when you look at the Corsair one that we reviewed as fairly as possible, on paper, it looked great, right? It was a really small custom rig. It was very high quality. It looked a bit different, as I say, a little bit quirky as well. And it came with some really top-end components. It actually had a water-cooled graphics card. It was an RTX 4080, and it also had an i9 14900K in it. You know, 
know, fantastic top end components should have been really cool, but it quite literally wasn't. The motherboard actually had a custom BIOS in it, which was restricting the power that the CPU could use, but even then, it was still hitting 90 degrees plus whilst gaming, and the rig itself was way louder than a standard DIY PC. Throw into the mix that this was way more expensive than a DIY or a system integrator PC, and just what's the point? And for me, this is the whole theme with these, right? They are just unpredictable. For everyone that's great, you may well get one that is absolute trash. It's incredibly hard to say. I think actually as a theme the industry is getting better as there's more scrutiny especially with video reviews but I will also say that I think one of the problems is that if you're not watching a video review and they don't do thermal tests and they don't do acoustics so you don't actually hear and see what everything is going to be like then it's all very well just like going on the appearance and the like performance as well the performance might be fine in terms of frame rate but if it's not thermally and acoustically, this is something that is going to affect you every day that you game, but isn't something that you might pick up from like a, I don't know, review that doesn't cover those things, right? And I will also say as well that it is a shame, but it kind of is the situation that we're in, that because obviously all of these system integrator rigs are much more local, so this is a UK system for UK people, whereas if you're in the States, then you'll obviously buy one in the States and that's only for the US market. I think there's probably a lot less reviews of these systems, if you like, the ones that have names I can't remember what this one is I think that's a shame because then the coverage you see is probably going to be more pre-buildy rather than system integrator purely from the fact that we're going to get more traffic working on something that has like a global audience if I test an Alienware rig then that is applicable to like all of the markets right whereas this is just limited to UK so I want to make you aware of that as well like you're probably going to see less coverage on system integrator rigs just because there's less of a market there it's a shame but that's the honest reality at this stage then we've gone from tangent to tangent so let's neaten everything up in a nice little bow for you and once again give you the pros and the cons firstly off the shelf require no PC knowledge at all and they come from a brand that you already know you don't have to discover new ones like your Corsairs etc etc and chances are you'll probably get over the phone support you could take it back to the store where you actually got it from and hopefully it will come with a decent system warranty but again this all comes at the cost of cost uncertainty around cooling and acoustics and perhaps worst of all a decent probability of bloatware like antivirus trials straight out of the box yuck so then everybody those are your three options and it should come as no surprise that obviously my favorites i tend to lean towards option one mainly because you get the knowledge i think pc knowledge is really important when you are a pc gamer and it allows you to have that hobby but if you're not interested in that you just i don't know work your job want to spend your time with your kids and have a pc for that very limited time that you have left option two is fantastic and number three well off the shelves they have their place i mean they're a great starting point for a lot of people they're very easy to say oh i want this as a gift and someone else can obviously get you that and again if you can get one on sale you can actually get some really high end components for a lower price but it is going to vary so much that please 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 do your research i'm not poo-pooing it entirely but i guess on paper generally speaking option two is better than option three one really important thing though that i will leave you with before we part ways is please don't be pressured into going for any of these particular options right one of the things that really annoys me is that people online try to be helpful but they all like point blank say no don't do that you've got to build it yourself or you have to get it from this particular store or this pc is really good this is such a good price go and buy it take your time do your research, work out what is best for you. Only you know that, and only you can find this out by doing a little bit of research. But once you have gotten to PC gaming, I think you're gonna love it. And I think your new favorite channel is gonna be PC centric. So if you wanna learn more about gaming PCs, how to put them together, then get yourself subscribed, smash that like button. And of course, if you do wanna check out current pricing on anything that was featured in this video, you can find it listed down below with our affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not check out Lenovo's epic gaming monitors? These displays look the business, inside and out, with cutting edge performance for amazing gaming smoothness and visuals. There really is such a huge range of monitors to choose from, with different panels, refresh rates and form factors, so you are bound to find your favourite. Push your gaming to the next level with Lenovo Legion, learn more with the link down below. But thank you so much for checking out this video, we'll catch you in the next one.